Hello and welcome back to our beginner series on choosing parts for a gaming PC build. In this video, we'll discuss everything you need to know in order to choose RAM for your build. We'll talk about how much RAM you need for gaming, compatibility issues to be aware of, and memory speed. And at the end of this video, we'll select a memory kit for the $1,000 gaming PC build we're going to put together to give you a look at our thought process when choosing RAM. Now the first question you'll need to ask is, how much RAM do you need for your specific use case? The quick answer to this question is, for most users, 16 gigabytes of RAM would be a good option. But the real answer is, it depends on what kind of system you're building. Are you building a high-end workstation PC that along with gaming you'll use for video editing and graphics design? If so, you're going to want at minimum 16 gigabytes of RAM and budget permitting, 32 gigabytes would probably be even better. Or are you working with an extremely tight budget and just looking to build an entry-level gaming PC? To save money, you can start with 8 gigabytes of RAM. Yes, there are many games that are starting to utilize more than 8 gigabytes of RAM, but for an extremely tight budget where the difference between 8 gigabytes and 16 gigabytes could mean the difference between a GPU upgrade or not, it will be okay to start out with 8 gigabytes for now. Not to mention, RAM is the easiest component in your PC to upgrade. If you have empty DIMM slots on your motherboard, upgrading to more memory is as simple as adding another stick to your system. You'll just need to make sure that you match the new memory stick or kit to the original one you installed, as you can run into issues by mixing different RAM options. For specific budget ranges for gaming PC builds, we recommend the following. If you have a larger budget, say over $1,000, go with 32 gigabytes of RAM. If you have a moderate budget between $500 and $1,000, go with 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you have a very tight budget, under $500 or so, start with 8 gigabytes of RAM. Of course, you can adjust this according to your needs. Most users may not even need 32 gigabytes of RAM, even if they are building a high-end gaming PC. But as RAM prices have come down so much, it really doesn't cost a ton jumping from 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes. So if you have a budget of over $1,000, you shouldn't have to sacrifice on your other components in order to fit in 32 gigabytes. Not all memory kits will be compatible with the components you choose. Here is a list of things to look for when considering a memory kit's compatibility with your other components. DDR generation, motherboard DIMM slots available, CPU cooler clearance, and form factor. DDR generation is important because older generation DDR memory will not work with motherboards that are built to support newer generation DDR memory and vice versa. You can't put DDR4 memory in a motherboard that is made for DDR5 memory, and you can't put DDR5 memory in a motherboard that is made for DDR4 memory. It's also important that you note how many DIMM slots, those are the slots that your memory sticks get installed into, your motherboard has. Some smaller form factor motherboards like Micro ATX and Mini ITX only come with two DIMM slots, so obviously you can't put a 4x8 gigabyte kit of memory into them. In that instance, you can only have a maximum of two sticks of RAM, so make sure you're not buying more memory sticks than your motherboard can hold. Certain memory kits can also have compatibility issues with certain CPU air coolers. Big bulky air CPU coolers can often hang over DIMM slots, and in some instances they can prevent memory kits with tall heat spreaders from being installed. So it's a good idea to make sure that if you are choosing a big bulky air cooler and you are selecting RAM that has tall heat spreaders, that you check and make sure that your air cooler will not interfere with your RAM. RAM form factor is also important to consider, especially if you're a beginner, because there are two form factors for RAM and only one of them will work for your desktop build. There's DIMM, which is the desktop form factor, and so DIMM, which is the laptop form factor. All you really need to know here is that if you are building a new desktop PC or upgrading an existing one, you'll want to make sure that you get DIMM form factor RAM and not so DIMM RAM as desktop motherboards are not compatible with smaller so DIMM memory sticks. There are two main factors that determine the performance of a given memory kit, frequency and latency. RAM frequency is similar to a CPU's frequency. The faster a memory kit's frequency is, the faster the memory can process data. Latency, on the other hand, is the time between when a system command is entered and when it is executed. The lower the latency, the faster the memory can move on to the next process. Latency and frequency are linked together when determining the overall performance of a given kit of memory, but they are not the same thing. 
However, it's also important to note that simply buying the fastest kit of memory on the market will not result in an equal increase in in-game performance. There is a point of diminishing returns where the faster the memory is, the less of a performance boost it will offer. This can vary too depending on how you are using your system and or what kinds of games you are playing. RAM that operates at higher frequencies can provide performance increases in certain programs and games, while having little to no effect on other programs and games. So really in determining what RAM frequency is right for you, you need to evaluate the kinds of programs and games you will be running and determine whether or not faster memory will give you more performance when running them. As a general rule of thumb, Intel CPUs typically don't benefit as much when paired with faster memory, but on the other hand, AMD CPUs have been known to benefit by using faster RAM. The other thing to consider is that faster memory with a low latency can often cost a lot more than slower memory and higher latency. As of right now, for DDR4 memory, the sweet spot in terms of price to performance seems to be about a frequency of 3600 MHz and a latency of 16 or 18. Currently though, the price difference between 3600 MHz CL16 RAM and 3600 MHz CL18 RAM is almost double, so you'll have to decide if the slightly lower latency would be worth it for you. Of course, there are even faster DDR4 kits out there as well, but they will cost even more and may not provide enough performance returns to justify paying up for. DDR5 memory operates at much higher frequencies than DDR4, but there have been a lot of issues getting the fastest DDR5 memory kits to work well with even the most extreme current generation CPUs. So while there are DDR5 kits out there that operate at speeds of up to 7600 megahertz, they aren't a great option at the moment. Right now, the sweet spot for DDR5 kits in terms of price to performance seems to be right around 6000 megahertz with a latency of 30. Of course, as DDR5 is still a newer generation, this will change in the future as new CPU generations get released that can accommodate faster memory. All right, that's the basics of choosing memory for your gaming PC. Now we'll walk you through how we chose a memory kit for our $1,000 build. For gaming oriented builds, we generally recommend that you spend between three to 7% of your budget on your memory. So we were looking in the 30 to $70 price range, which was plenty to get us 16 gigabytes of RAM. Because our B550 chipset motherboard is a DDR4 motherboard, we needed to limit our search to DDR4 memory. Also, since we had chosen an AMD CPU, the Ryzen 5 5600X, we wanted to get slightly faster memory, so around about 3600 MHz. So we typed in 16 gigabytes DDR4 3600 MHz into Amazon search bar. There were a ton of kits that matched our criteria. However, at the time of purchase, Team Group's T-Force Vulcan Z was one of the more affordable options at around $35. It's a 2x8 gigabyte kit that operates at 3600 MHz and has a latency of 18. We would have preferred to get a kit that had a latency of 16, but the cheapest DDR4 3600 MHz kit that had a latency of 16 at the time of purchase was the G-Skill Rip Jaws series for 50 bucks. So we opted for the Team Group kit, and we figured that if we ended up under budget at the end of choosing our parts, we could consider bumping up to the lower latency G-Skill kit. But if not, 3600 MHz CL18 memory should work just fine. So at $35, with all of the other components we have chosen so far, that brought the total for our build up to $799, and we still needed an SSD, a case, and a power supply. So in the next video, we'll walk you through how to choose the best SSD for your budget and needs. We'll see you there.